Seven Days to Die has a wide variety of weapons that you can use to fend off the zombie jerks. Some of these weapons are absolutely spectacular. Others, however, are giant crap sandwiches guaranteed to lead to your horrific and gruesome death if you rely on them to protect you. Today, we are breaking down my list of the top five worst weapons to use late game in Seven Days to Die Alpha 18. Right here in Savin's World. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's World, the gaming channel for the average gamer by an average gamer. And today, we are counting down the top five worst weapons to use late game in Seven Days to Die. While some of these weapons may have situational uses, relying on them as your go-to weapon will undoubtedly lead to your demise. So let's jump right into my list with number five, the hunting rifle. I'm sure you've heard the old saying, slow and steady wins the race, right? Well, whoever said that was obviously not thinking about the zombie apocalypse. Slow and steady in the face of feral zombie jerks equals gruesome and horrific death. And slow and steady is the perfect descriptor for the hunting rifle. While the hunting rifle does deal a tremendous amount of damage, it is unbearably slow. The reload time between each shot is just ridiculous. So sure, it may be able to take out most zombie jerks with a perfect headshot, but what if you're like me and occasionally miss a shot? And by occasionally, I mean all the time. I'm a crap shot even on my best days. Well, in the time it takes to actually reload the hunting rifle, the zombie jerks have had time to run up to you, punch you several times in the face, start gnawing on your appendages, rip out your intestines, you, you get the idea. And forget about trying to take on a pack of zombie jerks with the hunting rifle. It is just too slow. Even with Deadeye at max level, the reload speed is still ridiculously slow. Choosing the hunting rifle as your go-to weapon is a great way to end up as lunch for the zombie jerks. Just like this. Oh God! We're still hanging in there! But now we move on to number four, the junk turret. This choice may be a bit controversial. The junk turret does have several benefits and good features. With turret syndrome maxed out, the junk turret deals decent damage and has a respectable fire rate. Turret syndrome level 5 also allows you to place two junk turrets at the same time, which is kind of cool. So why is it in my top 5 worst weapons list? Well, for starters, you have zero control over targeting once the junk turret has been placed down. Generally speaking, the junk turret will focus on one target at a time. So while one zombie gets peppered by the turret, all of his zombie friends can just run on past and punch you in the face. Also, junk turrets are the absolute worst against demolition zombies. I mean, it is like the turrets have button-seeking ammo that goes directly for the demo's button every single time. Okay, Junkie, now, you see that glowing thing on his chest? Don't hit that, okay? Junkie! No! Ah, bad Junkie! Bad Junkie! Okay, let's try this again. This time, don't 
hit that button, okay? Junkie, what the hell? You did the exact opposite of what I said. Bad junkie. Okay, third time is the charm. I believe in you, junkie. Don't hit the button. Uh, I give up. Relying on your junk turret to save you in the late stages of the game is a good way to get yourself blown up or turned into a delicious snack for the zombie jerks. Just like this. Oh, 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 oh God! Save me, Junk Turret! Save me! There's nothing I can do! Oh, we're not, okay, come on, get me through! Let me through! But now we move on to number three, the compound crossbow and the compound bow. Two weapons in one slot? It's like a double decker crap sandwich. I've chosen to pair these weapons up because they're basically the same weapon. Now, I do have to start by saying that the archery weapons may have some usefulness. They are decent choices when going with a stealth build, and can take out most zombies with the sneak damage multiplier. That being said, I still think they are 10 pounds of crap in a 5 pound sack. The fire rate on these weapons is incredibly slow, and as we've discussed previously, Slow and steady gets you dead. Sure, archery weapons might be okay for taking out a single zombie jerk, but even a small group of zombies will tear you apart before you can take them down with the bow or the crossbow. And, and yeah, sneak damage is cool and all, but let me ask you a, a very basic question. How helpful is sneak damage on Horde Knight? Making the bow or the crossbow your go-to weapon is an excellent way to increase the zombie population. Oh no! This is it! Ah! Back off you zombie jerks! Get out of my death hole! Now it's time to talk about number two, the Steel Spear. This one just breaks my heart, folks. Early game, the spear is probably the best weapon in the game, but oh how the mighty have fallen. Late game, the Steel Spear is an absolute letdown. It deals crap damage and the attack speed is laughable. And that's not even the worst part. By performing a power attack with the spear, instead of doing like a like a, a mighty thrust capable of skewering the zombie jerks, no, instead you chuck it at them. Wait, isn't the spear a melee weapon? So you're you're throwing your melee weapon. It it just doesn't add up. And what what happens if you miss? Does your spear boomerang back to you? Or, or, or maybe it has like a, a retractable cable attached. Something like that? Nope. You miss and you are SOL, my friend. You have to find where it landed and try to pick it up, all the while evading the zombie jerk trying to rip out your insides. And good luck finding the spear if you happen to chuck it into some grassy area. Now, as I said, early game, the spear is awesome. The stone spear is so cheap to make that you can chuck these bad boys left and right and not have to worry about missing and not being able to find your spear. A couple of stones, a little bit of wood and some fiber, and you can just craft a replacement. No big whoop. 
Late game, however, this is just not possible. The cost to craft steel spears is ridiculously high. So subpar damage, a laughable attack speed, and an all but useless power attack elevates the steel spear to the number two slot on our top five worst weapons. Making the steel spear your go-to weapon late game will definitely lead to this. Die jerks! Die jerks! Oh god! No, 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 no! Now before we move on to number one, let's pause and take a look at a weapon that sucks. It just doesn't suck quite enough to make our top five. So I'm making it our honorable mention. No, wait, wait, scratch that, scratch that. Our dishonorable mention, the machete. Now I don't have much to say about the machete. The fatal flaw of this bad boy is the damage output. Even with max perks and a fully modded tier 6 machete, you are not able to generate enough damage to make this weapon viable in the late stages of 7 Days to Die. It does have a pretty cool bleed effect, but again, it just does not happen fast enough. Sure, the zombie jerk may be bleeding and losing health, but what good does that do you if the jerk can still repeatedly punch you in the face? There are far better weapons out there to choose from. And making this your go-to weapon will ultimately lead to this. Okay, all right, we're gonna take a second. We're gonna heal. Heal, come on. No, that might've been the death of us. No. But now it is time for the number one craptastic weapon in seven days to die. I'm talking a triple decker crap sandwich with a giant bag of suck on the side. Number one, the stun baton. Oh, fun pimps. Oh, oh, fun pimps. What have you done? What were you thinking? Oh, okay, I get it. The concept of the stun baton is kind of cool. Being able to electrocute zombies is an intriguing idea. But the execution of that idea was was just was just bad. First, the base damage of the stun baton is atrocious. You would deal more damage hitting the zombies with a wet noodle than you would with the stun baton. Even the wooden club has a higher base damage than this piece of crap. I'm not kidding. The chunk of wood you pick up on the side of the road deals more damage than the stun baton. I literally laughed out loud when I compared the base damage for the two. If you need a good chuckle, go compare them right now. It is hilarious. You know, on second thought, let me do it for you. Okay, here is the stun baton, tier 6 stun baton, next to a tier 6 wooden club. The wooden club has far more base damage. A wooden club! Okay, it gets even worse. Now, let's take the tier 6 stun baton, and let's compare that with a tier 1 wooden club. Look at that! Look at that! Look at the damage between those two. They're almost identical. A tier one wooden club versus a tier six stun baton. Do I need to say any more? Oh, but there is more to say. So next, the whole electrocution thing is a joke. You actually have to charge the stun baton. That means landing multiple blows on the zombie jerks before you can take advantage of the electrocution benefit. And even when the buff does fire, it only hits one zombie. You would think after working so hard to charge the stun baton, 
it would at least reward you for your efforts. But no, like everything related to the stun baton, it is a giant letdown. Now, you may be saying, yeah, but, but doesn't the stun baton have a perk tree? Surely that will make it worthwhile. Surely after I dump copious amounts of perk points into this tree, it'll make the stun baton at least a, a little usable. Oh, you sad, naive fool. Nope. The electrocutioner tree is worthless. It makes your stun baton deal 50% more damage. Oh, wow. You mean my crap weapon that has a crap base damage, literally the worst base damage in the game, will do 50% more damage? That's amazing! <laughs> Trust me, folks. Just some basic math shows how useless this perk tree actually is. Need even more proof? Well, let's look at the second part of this perk. Supposedly, at level 5, we can stun enemies for twice as long as usual. That might be cool, I, I guess. But here's the thing, folks. It doesn't work. The stun time is the exact same with or without this perk. This weapon is absolute garbage. Even the traitors don't want them. Wait, what do you mean you're not interested in the stun baton? Come on, Joel! Yeah, I can't say that I blame you. Nobody else is interested in the stun baton either. Well, okay, the traders will buy them occasionally, but that is literally the only thing that the stun baton is good for. And honestly, it may not even be worth the inventory slot just to sell it to the trader. You may be better off just tossing this giant turd burger on the ground and letting it despawn. If you are stupid enough to choose the stun baton as your go-to weapon, let me show you what the future holds for your dumb ass. Ah! No! You will not take us alive! <laughs> So there you have it folks, my list of the top 5 worst weapons to use late game in 7 days to die. Do you agree with my choices? Do you think I'm completely insane and that my choices are oh so wrong? Let me know in the comments below. And also, let me know your list of the top 5 worst weapons. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable and would like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. But for now, this is Savin saying, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.